Hello, I'm Lou McFadden, W5DID, that's my call. Um, I went to work for NASA in 1967, and my idea then was to fly and build something that actually went into space. Um, and I've been a ham radio operator since 1961, so I've been doing this a long time. But anyhow, uh, this this is the ham radio equipment that's on board the ISS uh, on the American side. Uh, this is a Kenwood D710 amateur radio. There's some minor modifications we've made to it, mostly in the firmware, uh, to, in order to make it easier for the crew to use. <clears throat> One thing you don't want an astronaut doing is having to uh, go to the manual to figure out how to turn on the radio. So we've made some significant changes in, in that operation so the crew can simply move up to the radio, bring it up, and it'll be in a known configuration. Um, so it's a little bit different than what, what the uh, radios are in your car. Because in your car, you want the radio to come up in the same configuration it was last time it was used. Here, they, you want it to come up in a standardized configuration. So we've made some changes there. What we have here is, uh, this is a power supply. There's one just like it up on this space station. And this one is unique in that uh, it is qualified to operate either in the Russian side or the US side. It has all, met all the specifications and requirements for both uh, places. So, in the U.S. side, they have two different sources of power, uh, 28 volts DC and 120 volts DC. Now, sometimes the experiment will be going that will need an outlet, a particular outlet on the power. So this system can be turned down, turned off, and connected to the, an alternative, whereas most systems cannot do that. So, and this one is also qualified for operating in the Russian module. So it's, that's why we call it the interoperative radio system, IORS, because it can, uh, it's, this one can serve as a backup to the one in the Russian module and vice versa. So uh, we uh, don't want to have a different system. We want them both to be the same so the crews can be trained uh, either in Russia or in the U.S. and they have the same system both places. So that really is a benefit for us. You were telling me about the different components inside. Now there are no transistors in there? Well, uh, yeah, one of our uh, objectives is to have long-term reliability. So, uh, as most people don't really realize, uh, like our cell phones and all, are very complicated systems. And they have uh, highly integrated circuits. And uh, we particularly wanted to avoid that complicated system. So this one does not have any microprocessors in it. So the likelihood of it failing due to a radiation event is very low. Uh, I wouldn't say it's bad hard, but it, that's our intent, is to make it so that it can withstand the rigors of space travel. So uh, no, no computers in here. That's not true of the, of the radio. That's uh, we have not changed that, but uh, that's easier to change than this. So I'll be glad to answer any questions that you have. Uh, how, how do we get in contact with you? What's the group? Uh, get in, go to the Aris uh, website, A R I S S Amateur Radio on International Space Station.